Good morning, folks. We've got the ultimate follow-up to yesterday's top stories. You guys surprised me yesterday, and so did the lightning return on GOES-16. Let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours of quasi-sunspot minimum. We've got way more spots than this minimum trough in the 11-year sunspot cycle should dictate, but at least they are attempting to do so covertly. We've got no solar flares. All morphing and small ejecta have found their way to releasing away from Earth. Nearly 100% of the dozen or so pops the last four days have been at the limbs, going to the side. That leaves just one sunspot group still on the Earth-facing half. It continues to shrink, and despite its magnetic complexity, he's playing along in stealth mode as well. Silent spots departing today. So four days ago, we had the coronal hole up north swinging through, but it is departing now. Its solar wind stream impacted Earth but was not able to produce intense telemetry. Middle line purple plasma speed barely even cracked 500 kilometers per second. Far right, you see it beginning to drop out. The geomagnetic effects never got worse than mild instability, and they are waning now, along with the magnetometer deviations, smaller and smoother curves prevailing this morning. The equatorial coronal hole should have its solar wind arrive within about 36 hours, and it is expected to be slightly more powerful than the one which we are exiting now. Looking at the last 24 hours of CONUS, GO-16, day cloud phase distinction using RGB air mass base, taking that in quickly before switching to the lightning detectors. And not only do we once again see a sunset explosion of returns up the mountain range from Mexico and up into Canada, but the lightning associated with the central state storm system was bananas. And not just because the convergence line drew curves of electricity that look like bananas. It's quite the show, and I bet that one produced some great sprites. Folks, how about the same type of paper as yesterday, but on the greatest of seismic events of 2017? While this paper won't be in print for another month, its preprint is online now, and you guessed it, electrical anomalies in the ionosphere preceding the Great Mexico 8.2 earthquake of September last year. I have been waiting for this one, especially since it hit dead center of a red alert on our alert maps, confirming that we did read the pre-seismic anomalies correctly. And now for more on that, I was astounded at how many of you popped in to see Electroquake yesterday. Looks like we've got more new faces than I imagined. And if that's the case, you should check out those bottom links on the QuakeWatch.net page as well, and if you think you have the time and dedication. Truly, that's all you need. I'm not a squirrel fart smarter than you are. Then watch our 2017 presentation, get a handle on how you predict earthquakes, and just go. We're here to help. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.